안녕하세요. 콜롬비아 타이. Hi, my name is Tai. I want to share uh, with you guys about Luca. Uh, in Hmong we call Luca. It's basically a basket for carrying stuff. So it's made from bamboo strip. The thought behind this is, you know, even though they're small strip all the way along, but when you weave them all together, it's quite rigid and strong. It's still, I mean, it have a little bit of flexibility on it as well. Uh, on the top, you can see that they're a bigger strip. This is to provide a more structural support. And so you want a strong top. And also on the bottom, it's a little bit thicker. The, the weaving is uh, more layers, as you can see. Back in the day, there weren't really products that are not as available. And so these were made by, you know, your neighbors and, you know, your uncles or your dad. Uh, basically the people in the village, right, based on their need. These were made to carry produce that you basically have it out in the fields and you go and harvesting it. Um, and then this is great, this is a child's size. So basically you have it on your back and you can basically pick, uh, you know, whatever that you plant and or, you know, and then just put them in the back of the basket as you move along. The way the strap is being uh, held together, as, as you can see, the, there's a string basically go through the side and then there's another piece of bamboo uh, stick that basically being tied to a bamboo stick and so it's being trapped there so that you can't really pull it out because it's, the, uh, it's being stopped by the bamboo stick right there. Hola, mi nombre es Gemma Beltrán. Hi, I'm Gemma Beltrán. I'm the community partner from Mexico for the Works Museum. I'm going to talk about the Mecapal. The Mecapal, or Mecapali, as is called in Nahuatl language, is a band made of isle or cotton. Um, the isle itself is a fiber that is obtained from plants like agave, and the process of extraction, preparation, and weaving is very complicated, you will deserve a separate explanation. The Mecapali was invented by the Nahuatl people or Mexican people living uh, in Mexico and Meso Mesoamerica as a way to carry heavy loads. They have to transport things by land and they didn't have animals to help them do this job. So they came up with the Mecapal. It's a band with two strings attached that allow them to carry heavy loads. The way we use a mecapal, you attach it to the forehead and you have to incline your body as an inner reverence and that allows you to distribute the weight all through your body. That way not a single muscle has carried the full load. The mecapal has been so useful for the people in Mexico that even these days they still use it and they have come up with more modern versions of it. Hana Wash Day, Nancy Smith Amakiapi. I would like to introduce myself, Nancy Smith, and I'm from the Sisseton Wapiton Oyate in South Dakota. This morning I want to talk about this per flesh bag. This per flesh bag was made from the skin of either a deer, elk, or buffalo. Their fur was scraped off and it might have had some brain put on it but it wasn't tanned it was left to dry it was cleaned off really carefully and left to dry so when it dried it was very very stiff um, almost like cardboard but it was used to make carriers this is a carrier they might have held food dried food they might have held clothing they might have held utensils like knives, awls, arrowheads, whatever, used by both men and women. They could either be carried on somebody's back, there would have been loops on the back so they could be carried that way, 
or they would have been stacked on, on a travoy and either be pulled by a dog or it might have been pulled by a horse. They came in different variations of this. this. This is actually a bag style, and they were generally used to carry food like dried meat, dried corn. This is cut into what looks like a long rectangular shape with a flap. It's sewn up on the sides. They would have made holes up the side to pull either sinew or a leather strap to sew it up. Stitch through with either sinew or again with this, this hide. Not all of them were painted. I think that came more when trade came and we started trading different objects. So, but it's very beautiful. Our people, uh, before colonization, were seaboard, seafaring people. The Ojibwe Nation was all the way from the east to as far west as North Dakota, into Manitoba, the province of Ontario, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. In our language, um, this little guy is called a mukwa. This is a very um, beautiful technology that our people, our Anishinaabe people use to carry and to keep their babies safe. There would be a covering in which the baby would be laced up and, and much like this moss bag, um, this would be um, sewn to the board and the baby would be laced up. This wood is cedar which is light and, um, and these two pieces are made of black ash and this has to be steamed and molded there's no nails, and in order to hook the Dicknagan uh, headboard to the back, you see a bar uh, on the back that's wood, and you see on the side uh, there's notches. And so once the bar would be placed on the back and the notches uh, would be turned, and then that's how that is held in place. And then of course, on the bottom, very s small notches were made, to sew this um, with sinew to the, to the base of the wood. We did beautiful beadwork and we used beautiful fabrics and what we were telling the creator is we are so thankful for the beautiful gift of life, the child, the infant that you have given to us to take care of. We will place this baby in this beautiful moss bag or Dikanagan that has all of our knowledges about our medicines and living in our woodlands that we had these beautiful flowers. And, and so we said to the Creator, we're thankful that we have um, this child and we are going to wrap them in the knowledge where they came from. called Bil or Bire in, in Somali language and they are milk containers. Um, typically they will have like leather straps, things like that. Um, so the lid here is used as a cup you'll drink this from and it's made from a plant. It's uh, woven. The plant is called Qabo plant in, in Somali. There are a lot of insects and in where, where um, typically Somali nomads will use these and so the insects like to eat these. And then the other thing is it's sort of flexible. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit flexible and then it has some holes in it. So one, to stop the insects from eating them and two, to make the structure rigid and three, um, to make it like beautify a little bit more. So these are used to, um, to basically store and milk um, goats and uh, these ones are particularly for goats. There are varieties, so there is one for camels, which is a little bit more open and a little bit bigger. Um, there is a, a, this one is called Bire. Um, there is one that is called Deal, and the difference is kind of the shape. And um, one really cool thing is a single tool is used to weave these. So just one, it, it, one tool, it has a little handle, it's about probably this big, and it has a handle, and then 
this portion is flat and it's, so it's kind of like a knife and the tip of it is like a needle. So they can uh, scrape, cut the threads apart um, and also use it to weave. Why this material is used, um, they use this plant um, when it's rel readily available and then the, other, uh, the second reason is that it's easy to manipulate and turn it into different shapes and it holds the shape. Um, and then the other good thing is um, that they use this, is it's very durable. Um, so I asked my aunt how long she, you know, these would last and she said she had some of hers for as many as 30 years. So she said typically 10 to 30 years depending on how well you take care of it. And they do have a particular process of making it. They have a particular process of taking care of these or cleaning them. They clean them according to what it's going to be used. So basically the containers that are cleaned to just hold the milk and it keeps the milk lo fresh longer. Um, they clean them with and, and, and smoke them with one particular plant and then the ones that they want to use to churn butter they treat, treat it with a different particular um, plant and that actually impacts the milk properties.